Hi guys, I'm James, and this is my 2007 911 Turbo. And I am going to take you for a ride. So, back in 2014, I had a Z4 M Roadster as well as a BMW X5 35D and I was pretty much uh, kind of tired of the X5. I've never been a big SUV guy and after two years of ownership uh, the thing just needed to go. I took the Macan out for a test drive and it was great. And I'd highly recommend one if you're looking for a small athletic SUV with the typical Porsche accoutrement. And it kind of struck me that, you know, 911s do come with all wheel drive, or at least the four options as well as the turbos. So I figured I would start hunting 911s. So I started doing my market research and I pretty much was looking at the 997 Mark I. The price point was good, uh, the performance was good, and well, then it's got, you know, the 997's I think a beautiful car and it doesn't have uh, the interior that the 996 had. It has a much more newer, updated interior. So I like that. I think that was a selling point versus the 996, which is a more affordable car. But then I did more research and found out there was an IMS issue with the 997, something it shares with the 996. So I decided that the 997 Mark II, or the second, the refresh, the point two, the dot two, was the one that I should look at because in 2009, when they started uh, making them, they didn't have the IMS issue, they also had direct fuel injection, so they had better fuel economy and more horsepower, more performance, and they had refreshed the exterior a little bit, had a little more LEDs, it was a little bit cleaner of a car. So I started hunting 997.2s. Eventually what happened was the 997.2, anytime I found one that was in the 50s, it's either somebody bought it right away or I couldn't find one. So I said, well, I need to start looking at spending a little bit more money to find one of these cars. Unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, when I started looking up the price a little bit, I started finding 997.1 turbos would pop up. Most of them cabrios, most of them automatics, but they were within the range. So I said, you know what? The 997.1 Turbo had the 3.6 Metzger motor, which is supposed to be renowned as one of the most reliable motors that Porsche has ever built, or at least the most durable. And it was within my price range. And the thing about it though, is that the 997.2 non-turbo, the 997.1 non-turbo would be great cars to have. But ultimately, they would still be a half measure to what I really wanted, which was like a supercar. So um, I ended up started hunting 997.1 turbos, and uh, you know, I found this one. The funny thing is, I found it on CarMax of all places. It was out in Albuquerque, New Mexico and uh, had 23,000 miles on it and one owner. So I called up CarMax, got him to transfer me the car, put down the Benjamins and now she's mine. And I got a 100,000 mile warranty on it, which paid for itself and then some. Oh yes, I did take it skiing. Uh, that was interesting, but you know what? The car did actually quite well in the snow. 
Mind you, the car was silver when I got it, and it seems like every car I get a good deal on is always silver. And I love silver as a color in regards to it's very easy to maintain. Stains don't show it very well on silver, but it's a very blasé color for me. So I wanted to do something special. Um, one of the guys who lived in my apartment complex at the time had a uh, C63 AMG and it was wrapped with like a satin, like burnt orange, it was beautiful. So I finally ran to the guy at Starbucks and said, hey, well, who did your wrap? And he said it was a place called Imperial Works. Um, so I found them, called them up, got an appointment, and I got my Porsche wrap. They also did the yellow headlights as well. So I'd highly recommend them if you're into looking at, even if it's not a full car wrap, just like a racing track where you want some uh, tinting, or they also do a lot of clear bra application. So if you want to uh, put some armor on the front of your car, they're actually a great uh, group of guys to work with. They're very professional, they do a phenomenal job. And this car does not get the, the looks that it gets because it, it was a bad job. So I would suggest that any car guy, at least one, you have to own at least one Porsche in your life, ideally a 911, because the car is so competent, it builds, you build so much confidence as a driver, just knowing it's gonna do exactly what you ask it to do. It's almost kind of telepathic in terms of it, it just knows what you're gonna do next in so many ways. And the thing that was interesting about this car and not having owned a Porsche prior to this car is that it is so well put together and it's not just the quality of the material or the interiorness of a lot of the different controls. Nothing rattles in this car. Nothing rattles in this car. It's almost like the car was carved out of one giant block of metal. And the only thing that something does rattle actually is because it's something you put in it, like a pack of gum or your keys. I have the nice whale tail that the turbo comes with, and truth be told, the spoiler's kind of like the red thing on a dog. It only comes out if he's having a good time. Many years ago, someone at my job said, hey James, you're a car guy, right? So if you won the lottery, what car would you buy? And I thought, Lambo, Ferrari, all awesome cars. But truth be told, I told him I'd buy a 911 Turbo. Funny thing is, 15 years later, now I didn't win the lottery, but I did get the car.